with the understanding of the enemy within of Pharaoh's nobility, creating all the wars and bloodsheds. There are two types of wars to be distinguished, the horizontal war and the vertical war. It says horizontal wars versus vertical wars. The horizontal war is a war between the various peoples or slaves of Pharaoh's nobility, or between the various races or religions. Examples are today's Ukraine war or today's Gaza war, and of course the two world wars. So here you see the Ukrainian flag, this is the Ukraine war, and it says horizontal war, which is people versus people, which is horizontally, same level. So here in the pictures, you see the masters here, and here the people, and it says here vertical war, which is people versus masters. And the vertical war is a war against our masters, like fighting up against the hierarchical ladder upwards or vertically. Examples are the people's revolutionary movements before they got infiltrated by the very ones the movement was actually fighting against. If not even set up from the beginning as an internal war within the masters themselves of Pharaoh's nobility as in between the royalists and the republicans. Another example of a vertical war was the ransacking of Rome by the Vandals or the Dacia tribes decimating two Roman legions. So here you see Rome and here you see the Vandals attacking Rome, which was a vertical war. Here you see the very brave Dutch people who decimated two Roman legions. You know, these people had nothing, you know, just almost in their underwear, you know, and trying to save their children and their women. Just as Pharaoh's nobility did with the Indians, with African slaves, the Jaywalker genocide, etc., etc. They did the same thing with the white tribes. We're all tribes, all the peoples of the world, we're all tribes, and we're facing this extremely organized and brutal enemy. And these days they were called the Romans, and of course the elite, giving all the orders and the officers, they were all of Pharaoh's nobility, just as today. And um, of course there are other examples. In Portugal there was the uh, very courageous Viriatu, and then the Romans, as usual, they started to kill the women and the children, and uh, so they he lost. In France, there was Vercingetorix, La Bella Golica. Uh, the uh, War of the Gauls was it's probably the biggest genocide the world has ever seen, and Caesar he murdered about everyone there. And this is how later on the uh, pharaoh's nobility, because these guys, the Vandals, they were ransacking Rome. They couldn't stay there. And they said, well, let's go to France. We murdered everyone. And this is why French became the language of the nobility. You, know. you see, this is the white race. They also had to fight for their children, their women, fight for their lives. Courageous warriors, just like Indians. You know, they had nothing. It's a little little sword here, and then they, they had no, you know, they, they, it was impossible to win over these very organized and very brutal and lying enemy.
no chance at all. So a horizontal war is in between the peoples at the same level. And a vertical war is against the ones in power who rule the entire world now. So, in order to stop a horizontal war, it needs a vertical war. For instance, the only way to stop the Ukraine war would need both the Russian people and the Ukrainian people to neutralize the ones in power in one way or another. For the Russians to topple and set aside all the Russian politicians, all Russian generals and the entire Ruski police and justice system. And for the Ukrainians to do the same with their politicians, generals, police and justice system. So here you see the pharaohs with the same hammer as Zelensky. They're all pharaohs. So only a vertical war can stop the horizontal war. The same for Philistines and jaywalkers. If the Philistines won't stop the ones in power themselves, who are the Hamas in this case, and if the jaywalkers will not topple their authorities themselves who betrayed the jaywalkers on October 7th through total absence and leaving the back door open deliberately, then the horizontal war will expand into a major chaos and bloodshed. So here it says, horizontal war will expand if we won't rise up into a vertical war and put up a resistance. So here in the next uh, collage, it says, uh, son of Hamas. So this is an S, an O, and an N in this sort of Arabic handwriting. And here it says Mossab Hassan Youssef. That's this guy here. And this is his father. So he's the son of his father, who was one of the founders of the Hamas. And he's very much against Hamas because he knows how cruel and uh, dishonest they are. So here it says M O S A B and the rest. And this is not his real name because the Hamas wants to kill him and they would otherwise. So here you see in Philistine, a guy taking pictures, pictures of the Philistine children next to a missile with, with which they are going to kill innocent other children. And um, you see them smiling and... Um, the statistics say, you know, that 70% um, of the Philistines, they support Hamas. But now they're sort of crying because it doesn't go all too well as, they, as it was supposed to be. And um, there's only like 2% who are, in, who are against Hamas. And the rest, they have no, uh, or they didn't express their opinion. So 70%, they are, the Philistines, they are for Hamas. So the son of Hamas here. And in this respect, I have a lot of respect for this man called the son of Hamas, Mossab Hassan Youssef, who will understand my words that it needs a vertical war as the only solution to stop this madness of these endless horizontal wars where our masters of Pharaoh's nobility just play out their various slaves against each other as on a big 
chessboard with live players giving the ones with high killing scores a medal or two and a higher rank to order others to achieve higher kill scores. The masters know that in order to prevent a vertical war by the slaves, it needs perpetuous horizontal wars to keep them busy and to drain energy. So the accumulated potential for an uprising won't get too high. Of course, all the financing and organizing of this perpetuous state of horizontal wars is being done by the Swissies in their global base of Pharaoh in the Alps, the Swiss beast, home of the devil. So here you see the entire headshed of Hamas in Switzerland where they got financed and they got back a backgammon case with this thing in it. Here it says, burn Switzerland, February 2012 in Swiss Parliament. You see all the wood here. Here the Senator Geri Müller. There were many dangerous Nazis who were called Müller, by the way. Here Mushir Almas Almasri. Very dangerous guy. He wants to kill all the jaywalkers, as he says. Sayed Abu Musame and Kamis Al Najjar. They were financed in Swiss Parliament, and they got their morale pretty much boosted. You know, thinking that you know they got a lot of help from the Western world, as here in Switzerland, a lot of financing. Well, let's go and kill the jaywalkers. So, this is what Swissy is doing, eh? And then they say to us they are neutral and clean and innocent. They did the same thing with Hitler. You know, so the Nazis didn't attack Switzerland, and neither were there any terrorist attacks ever in Switzerland. This is how they do it, you know. You must keep the base clean, eh? Therefore, in all the movies to indoctrinate through entertainment, the masters leave their signature on each movie, while the slaves enjoy the entertainment with a beer and a snack or two. The masters have other plans, more subliminal. So here in this movie, the guy is being asked to whom, and he replies, the Secretary of Defense. So in this movie, titled On the Basis of Sex, at the very moment, the elite conspirators of our masters say the words, the Secretary of Defense, it immediately shows the big pharaonic obelisk of America. To emphasize for the insiders that the entire military apparatus is in the hands of Pharaoh, whereas Pharaoh's obelisk is a symbol of pharaonic domination. So after he said the Secretary of Defense, the next image you see in the movie is this with this obelisk and here are the same guys here the conspirators and here you see the title on the basis of sex no it's not what you think it is so for our masters when they say secretary of defense and even show the pentagon with it for them that is all connected with this thing here, which is entirely alien to our culture and comes from far away from another culture. For them, this pharaonic symbol of domination is related with the Secretary of Defense and the Pentagon, with which, of course, they dominate us 
and other nations. These two images here with the obelisk here and here with the Pentagon and how do you call this river? The Potomac River, isn't it? They are from the same film. Right after you see the guy saying Secretary of Defense. And here it says vertical symbol for horizontal wars. And the message in the film is that the obelisk and Pharaoh's symbol of domination is related to war. And specifically, the horizontal war to dominate the peoples. Funny though, that this vertical symbol stands for horizontal wars. Sort of like a Christian cross, if you like, with a vertical and a horizontal component. And the cross derives also from the Middle East, just as the obelisk and Pharaoh's horizontal warfare. So here again is the title of the movie on the basis of sex. Um, by the way, in spite of the thought-provoking title and the huge phallus symbol, it is not a sex movie, but rather a political biography about the first American woman admitted to study law, only permitted for man in those days. Therefore, the title with the other word for gender in it. I guess the word sex goes better with the obelisk instead of the word gender for the twisted, perverted minds of our rulers and Hollywood. And there's even an obelisk in the background. Here, you can see it here. In Paris, Place de la Concorde, which I filmed for you a couple of years ago. So, Frenchy here, contrary to the image, is in fact working on the obelisk. At least, that's what he's supposed to do. So, how else than with a vertical war, this madness of the endless horizontal wars killing our dear ones can be stopped? It says, only a vertical war can stop the horizontal war. Vertical, horizontal, soldier dying, humanity dying. Only a vertical war can stop the horizontal war. The movie on the basis of sex was not bad, actually. Moreover, as it was a true story, and for me, a lot of interesting subliminal messages, of course. And as said, this phenomenon is global and does not only concern Hollywood. In this fantastic Russian movie called Silver Skates, it shows at the end a huge obelisk when announcing the birth of the son of this aristocratic family and the countess having a son, where this lovely aristocratic family of Pharaoh's nobility goes ice skating next to the huge obelisk of their ancestors, as if to say, this is where we come from, and this is where we are today, and a happy end where Pharaoh lives forever and ever more. So this is, of course, an actual picture of the film Silver Skates. Here you see the skates. And you see the happy aristocratic family. Here is the countess. And here they got their newborn child. And it really gives a message. Usually it is at the end of the film, just as here. 
um, that's what I say. You know, it's um, Pharaoh's nobility. That's why they show it next to the obelisk. And they know it. They just give a message, you know, amongst each other. And at the same time, you know, this is subliminal messages for our children. And in this fantastic Russian children's movie for all ages and all its subliminal messages for the masters, their slaves, and their children, it even shows an entire Freemason setup of a Freemason lodge with the all seeing eye of Horus and the two Solomonic pillars, Yashin and Boaz of King Solomon, who was married with the daughter of Pharaoh. So he sees silver skates and the all seeing eye of Horus. He is the magician in blue for the war. It's a, it's a war against us and our children. Here is the uh, the seat of the uh, the master of the lodge. On the table, the, there's probably a, a death skull. And here are the two pillars, Yashin and Boaz, in a sort of a poisonous green color. Or maybe the green is snake green as pharaoh's cobra snake on his head the poisonous creatures that they are poisoning our children with lots of subliminal messages how else than with a vertical war to stop them while they are annihilating us through their horizontal wars and back to America again with the film Reminiscence, where it shows the occult temple somewhere in America, full of obelisks and sun hieroglyphs, which makes you wonder what they might be hiding inside. So here's the title, Reminiscence, with Hugh Jackman. You can see all the obelisks. And here are the sun hieroglyphs. And uh, it's an actual building uh, somewhere in America. <laughs> Why did they put all the obelisks in it? And also in this case, as in the Rusky film, the image was shown at the very end as a final signature under a letter or a message. And a message it is indeed, a subliminal one. And now a movie with subliminal messages for the jaywalkers, or jayrunners in this case, so they'll better understand the Gaza war and the terrible betrayal of their pharaonic government of the JJ base. Here in the film Operation Finale, as a reference to the final solution, Operation Finale, eh? final solution, about the capture of Adolf Eichmann, Adolf Eichmann in Argentina. As in every other movie, Pharaoh's nobility needs to show their symbol of the pharaonic domination transmitting the real makers of genocides and horizontal wars through pharaoh's symbol of domination in nearly every film as an identity stamp of the makers of movies wars and genocides so dear jaywalkers if you want to know who really are behind the final solution, Operation Finale, here it says Operation Finale, together with Pharaoh's obelisk. Can't you see that they are laughing straight in your faces? I've been telling you all along for so many years 
how Pharaoh's nobility are the brains behind it all. And here you can witness that once more in the sublimi subliminal images and the subliminal words of the title. They even show the obelisk of Buenos Aires in Argentina, the land where all the Nazis went to after the war, including Adolf Hitler himself. Nazi Templars of Pharaoh all over, straight in your face. Argentina, Pharaoh's Obelisk, an Operation Finale for final solution. Open up your eyes and see through the magic veil. So here on the cover, Operation Finale, standing for final solution with the obelisk. So they are the ones behind the final solution. And it shows Argentina where they all went to. And here too, in the middle of the film, it shows the pharaonic symbol of domination in a film about catching a Nazi in Argentina. So why do they have to show this obelisk again? Hey. So this statue here actually stands in the JJ Bays. Here it says Emperor Wilhelm II of Germany on his horse and the Zionist leader Theodor Herzl. And they met actually in the JJ Bays. In 1898 and 20 years before the Belfort Declaration, Theodor Herzl met the German Emperor Wilhelm II three times, where Herzl asked the masters of Pharaoh's nobility, including the Sultan of Turkey, if the jaywalker slaves, please, could come back home and the answer was negative because the sultan didn't want them back in his caliphate in which jerusalem laid in 1898 and the german emperor didn't want them in his german empire anymore either so here it says zionist leader theodor herzl and here, Emperor Wilhelm II, or William II of Germany, who didn't want the jaywalkers in his empire anymore. So here you can read about it. Wilhelm II's voyage to the Levant in 1898. And you can read it yourself here. So this is what you saw at the statue. It says here a photo montage of Herzl's brief meeting with the Kaiser, but this really happened like this. By the way, Herzl, it means little heart. And, uh, well, he had a heart for the JJ base, apparently. Maybe he had a big heart, but he was a Freemason, you know. As I've already shown you, there's a, there's a Freemason lodge called Theodor Herzl in the JJ base. And the Freemason lodge would not give the name of their lodges, of any of their lodges, to a non-Freemason. So Theodor Herzl was a Freemason, and most likely a member of Pharaoh's nobility, of the Jaywalker nobility, which also exists and who are not really friends with the jaywalker slaves. It needs a vertical resistance, folks, and I would like the jaywalkers to rise up together with the Germanic tribes, because we all have the same enemy, and we've all been duped. Dear slaves of this prison planet, Please stop the horizontal wars and initiate the vertical one. There is no other solution to obtain world peace. And then there's this funny thing with the number 101, 101, 
which I see everywhere. And it's very much connected to the horizontal and vertical wars and to murder, torture and genocide of and by our masters. There was the 101 or 101st Hamburg Police Battalion of the Nazis who were part of the SS Einsatzgruppen genociding jaywalkers and Poles during World War II, murdering at least 100,000 men, women and children. So you see their faces, they're celebrating. Here you got Adolf on the wall. Better to put them against the wall, eh? So it says Police Battalion 101 of the SS Einsatzgruppen. I see this number everywhere. And it's not really nice. So here you can read about the Reserve Police Battalion from Hamburg. 101. Yeah, the murder of Jay Walker's commanders, Wilhelm Trapp. Well, you remember, you know, the family Trapp in that nice video the um, about the Alps and going to Switzerland. Remember? Well, here he is, the Trapp family. Uh, I forgot the name of the video. And uh, now you can read about it. The 101 operations. In Bessarabia, remember Bessarabia? That's where the Swissies are in Ukraine, eh? It's called Bessarabia. And, um, well, you read it yourself. And there's something about this number, and I'm going to tell you where it's from. So here you can talk, see about their actions. The total they murdered from 42 to 43, the 101 battalion, almost 100,000 people, and probably 100,000 people. They were in death camps, Majdanek, Treblinka. Uh, the number 101 is, you know, it's, it's referring to death, murder, genocide, torture, and whatever. And I'm going to explain you, it's coming from Pharaoh. Yeah, they are from Hamburg district, the uh, the 101. So, the 101 battalion. And I can see it everywhere in history. I, I see it popping up everywhere. So you keep your eyes open. There is a room 101 in the George Orwell book, 1984 where people get tortured and interrogated. Here it says the V for victory here, the Templar V, room 101. And here you see room 101 with all the inmates having passed here. And here from the George Orwell, it says, you asked me once, said O'Brien, what was in room 101? I told you that you knew the answer already. Everyone knows it. The thing that is in room 101 is the worst thing in the world, George Orwell. <clears throat> you can see room 101. And me, homie Ross, I was in room 101 where the Swissies heavily tortured me through oxygen deprivation. And where in 2015, I lost more than 30 kilos in three and a half months in room 101. You can't believe what they do to you in room 101 and how it destroys you. The Swissy Nazi Templars kept me in a 101 isolation chamber for one entire year of the entire five and a half years total in a high security facility for political prisoners. Room 101 is now being repeated 
in the Netflix series Travellers, where they also have a room 101 for torturous purposes. There is the 101st Airborne Division, the 101, who are also a bunch of killers for the horizontal wars, just following orders without thinking. So here it says, 101st Airborne Division, United States Army, the Screaming Eagles since 1918, Airborne. And here, 101st Airborne Division. There is the film 101 Dalmatians, the 101 Dalmatians, about the nobility and the evil Cruella de Vil, just as the Countess de Vil, who got married with the Raven of Zurich. So here's the Raven of Zurich. You, I'll, I'll show that in my video, the Raven of Zurich. And he got married with the Countess de Ville, d'Amblin de Ville, like this one here. And here you see the number 101 again, and it's connected with the nobility. And you have to hear the black and white here, like in the Freemason large checkerboard configuration, the black and white. De Ville, it's, it's all here, and the 101 again. It's all the time, 101. So, what's wrong? with that 101 number which is so much related with death evil torture and genocide well i'm gonna tell you what it is it's pharaoh's son hieroglyph with the sun in the middle and the two bars on each side which i've shown you 13 years ago in my film, The Pharaoh Show, and many other videos on my channel, Gatsafrats. The masters used the sun hieroglyph as a secret symbol on houses to announce their presence to each other. For all houses with the sun hieroglyph on it have a room 101 and are 101 houses. So this, if you have a dot here in the middle, it's the official um, um, hieroglyph of uh, the pharaohs. And these bars, you know, if you put them right, you get a one. And for them, it doesn't matter if they're like horizontal or vertical. This is the 101. And they do it a lot. Uh, having this vertical, so which I also filmed you. This symbol can either be, the sun hieroglyph can either be vertically or horizontally. And I've shown you many examples. I'll show you some more examples here in this video, uh, which I found in my older videos. And I have to tell you, my channel Gatsafrats, you better take all the videos and download them because they take, they're going to take that off uh, very soon now. And in 101 are also the two columns, Yashin and Boaz, and maybe even the binary system of ones and zeros, through which their total control system with digital binary systems becomes a reality with lots of 101 torture chambers and 101 genocides. So this uh, screenshot is also from one of my videos on my channel Gatsafrats. All the uh, sun hieroglyph pictures I'm going to show you, they're all from my channel Gatsafrats, so you better download all the videos. It's going to disappear within a few weeks now. I filmed this on the motorway on a petrol station with a lot of pillars. So this is really the 101. Here's the 1, the O, the, the, the sun hieroglyph in the middle, and another 1. So you can make it like horizontally, and then here the sun, as i just shown you before. And they also have it vertically, in many ways actually. Even here's another triangle. 
and it uh, you know so it is uh, there's the concept of three and four in it you know and here's a square in it uh, it's all there you know so this is what they mean with the 101 it's a sun hieroglyph and um, the pillars yashin and boaz so here you can see it vertically like 101 here 101 and uh, i filmed this in strasbourg on a very dark and sinister house in strasbourg france it's on my channel gatsefrat this is a 101 house and they got the m from mason here here's a shell here the handshake of the uh of the freemasons well, with a lot of weird stuff hanging down even here in the window there's the uh there's the 101 with a cup you know the grail it's probably a, a freemason lodge and anyway the pillars yachin and boas like yachin and boas um, has nothing to do really with the jaywalkers. It is uh, the jaywalker nobility. It's um, it, it was in the temple of King Solomon, who was married with the daughter of Pharaoh. So Yachin and Boaz is definitely pharaonic. And um, so, yeah, there's something odd indeed about the 101 code and most definitely related with their vertical and horizontal wars. The masters use the horizontal wars for their downward vertical war to eradicate us. This sun hieroglyph here, and, and again in another way, but it's definitely the 101, I filmed at the I call it the George Bush Castle, the ancestors of Laura Bush, and the Bush family comes there, of the extremely powerful dynasty of the Swiss von Grafenried, who helped founding the uh, America. Here you can see the red and white stripes of America even. And so we need a vertical upwards rule to pull them down off their high pedestals proclaiming their lies to us so the slaves will stop fighting each other in endless horizontal wars and genocides so here you can see the sun hieroglyph here in the middle is the it's also the compass of course and for the o and here the one and the one lying down and so i filmed it in wood on a door on a farmhouse uh, down at where the C George Bush Castle uh, is in Switzerland, next to um, it's in the canton of Bern, and uh, it probably also belongs uh, to them. Like the sun, uh, the sun hieroglyph, the one hundred one, room one hundred one, which they usually have in castles, eh? the torture chamber, the dungeon. Bring down. The 101, I tell you, and use the vertical upward movement. There's no other way. If you don't want to end up in room 101, I was in room 101 in an isolation cell without sufficient oxygen in a Swissy detention center for political prisoners and i tell you you don't want to be there in room 101 